Hello. Hi, everyone. All righty. While we wait for the numbers to tick up, I've got some homework for you as per usual. So I'm going to get you that. While we're waiting, I hope everybody's doing well today. I feel good. I feel excited about seeing you all and doing this exercise again. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to each of you. It's so good to be here. All right, I'm gonna, while we're waiting, share the screen. And you can start doing this homework that's on your screen in the chat. The homework says, praise report, share where you're from and something that you're happy about in the chat. Tell me all the good things. Let's see. Oh, thank you. This dress is dressed in joy, which I have loved and become obsessed with this year. And so um, thank you for acknowledging that I feel joyous when I'm wearing it. <laughs> thank you. It is a full dress. Yay. Good. I love this. Yes, we survived. <laughs> Hi, Ina. Looking forward to seeing you. Yes, Minnesota. I'll be there next month. Hope it warms up <laughs> when I'm there. Yes, Houston and help. Fun fact, Houston, never been. Been to all kinds of other places in, in Texas, but not not yet to, let me see, let me get, okay, good, you can see everybody. So you can, if you have your, um, your drop down when you're doing the chat, you can have it that everybody sees your response or just me, I'm fine with whatever one you choose. Um, but if you want everyone else to see what you're saying, then make sure you um, drop down to everyone so they can see you. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, there we go. Now it's doing it. All right, you should be able to have everybody see your stuff now. So the Bronx, Denver, Omaha, happy for coffee. <laughs> it's a little and big thing sometimes. Oh, family is important. All right, let's see. Happy about the possibilities for the future. Yes, now you can choose everyone, everybody. The setting was, I have uh, control issues. So <laughs> usually I make it that you can only talk to me, but for this session, I want you to talk to each other. Brooklyn, hey Sue. All righty, hi everybody. Wonderful, we'll give it one more minute and see where we're at. We're expecting a good crowd, so I'm excited to see Pennsylvania. Hi, Jeremy. Um, while I'm waiting for everybody else, I just have to say, give a shout out to Jeremy who literally walked me through a panic attack yesterday um, and, and, um, and calmed me down. And it's one of the things that I'm grateful for is having wonderful mentees who support me when I need to. And I have a lot of them, but yesterday he stepped up big time. So applause to you. And I love that energy of 2023 already. Hi, Rose. Hi, Rose. Charlotte. Hey, Daryl, hope the dog is doing well. Hi, Sonia, my BFF, Minneapolis. Hi, Dr. Scott. Oh, these are my good friends here. Hi, Anna. Hi, Linda. Yes, yeah, South Orange. All right, awesome. So I am going to scroll down one more. Oh, my Lynn. So good to see everybody. Hi, my neighbor, Jen. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment and talk to you for a little bit and then we'll get really started started. Um, all right, so it's 2023 and I feel good, but I feel a little off kilter because usually I start the year, literally, literally start the year um, on the, you know, the first day talking to you all, but this year I didn't do that. So um, I felt like I missed you all this week, but I'm glad that I waited because 
Um, number one, you shared a bunch of stuff that's going on that I'm excited for. And number two, I felt really calm coming into today as opposed to, you know, usually I feel very sort of um, frantic. So let's just see. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's been going on. Um, oh, my goodness, Amsterdam. Yes, I hope to get there this year. Wait till you see my vision board. I'm super excited about it. Um, so, yes, talk amongst yourselves, as we say in Brooklyn, while I talk to you. So I am going to ask you a couple of questions in a little bit. As you know, those of you who've done this before know that we've got to go back to 2022 before we go forward to 2023. And um, in going back to 2022, if I was going to give it a grade for myself, I would say that it was a solid B. And I've had some C, some average, some below average years um, before this. 2020 was like a, I don't know, there was a no grade system. <laughs> um, but it was nice to be able to reflect back that 2022 um, was all right. You know, and I'll take that considering we are still in a global pandemic, um, although people don't want to believe that it is true. And so I'm excited. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of introduction of myself uh, officially, because thankfully there's a lot of people on here that I don't know. So this is me and one of my favorite pictures of myself taken by my chosen photographer, other than my father, um, Jay McClinton. And um I'm a lawyer, although I don't practice law anymore. I um, am in and around lawyer lawyer places all the time. And in um, what I do is I, I try to make things better. And whether that's through leadership, as you see here, I am a board member of the New York City Bar Association, past president of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. Um, and uh, I interact and do professional development as a part of um, my give back to the world and the way in which I um, take care of my family, myself, my habits. <laughs> and um, I try to say that I'm not, I don't want to be the reason why you're bored in a room. And so uh, I try not to be boring. I try to be engaging. And I am glad that I have had the opportunity to interact and engage with so many of you uh, in the past year and just in general. And so let's go. We got some housekeeping. So I use an anonymous online tool that allows you to interact with me um, and tell me what you want, what you really, really want. And also to, um, to answer any exercises that I have on the screen. So take a moment and either go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com and put in that code, or you can use your phone and use the QR code there. And I'll actually also drop the link in the chat. Let me just grab that for a moment. My, whoops, let's stop sharing. Okay, I'm gonna grab the link for you. I'm in such a good mood. This is so, um, I'm seeing so many people who I love on here and also a lot of people who I don't know who you are and I'm excited to uh, become in community with you. So you'll see, this is a collective experience of intention setting, and manifestation. I'm going to drop the code right now. Hold on a second. You'll see that there's a little bit of a magic that happens here. Here's the link in the chat. So you can um, just click that link. It'll take you to the same place as the code, the QR code, and it'll be on subsequent slides. So don't worry about it. You'll know you're in the right place when you see PGE Consulting Group, LLC, Intention and Goal Setting 2023. So you're right with Coach Paula. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so there is an assignment for you on the screen um, in the mentee. So if you haven't yet clicked the link, um, if you for some reason have decided that you don't want to vote and use this option, um, please do because it'll help us, me, uh, to navigate the two screen situation better. So let me just uh, see what's going on. The question is in three words or phrases, describe how 2022 was for you. And while you're doing that, so um, for those of you who are looking for the code still, just click the link that's right there in the chat. And I will share the screen again so you can see the actual um, code. I feel like a DJ when I'm doing this. Okay. Hold on. All right, there we go. Um, 
<clears throat> so if you do not have pencil, paper, crayon, uh, something to write on or type with, then you need to get that because there is homework for you. We'll be doing work. This is a working exercise of manifestation of your intentions and your goals. And so while I'll be sharing with you a ton of resources, um, both during and after, I want you to, um, while we are doing this, make sure that you um, are writing down some of the things that you are committing to. And then you can transfer that to whatever you want to transfer it to later, but start the process by actually making the world shift a little bit by writing it down. Right now, the biggest word for what you're saying about 2022 was challenging. I'll let you keep going on that while I keep talking. So you'll see that we are now in 2023. I feel like I have blinked. I was just in 2020, 2019, and then 2020 and then a blur, and here we are. And I'm super excited for the um, energy of this year. And I know some of you, uh, especially those of you who just registered recently, um, messaged and said, ooh, this week has already been challenging. Um, but I encourage you to think about some of the things we've seen recently. We have learned that we do not have to have imposter syndrome. We can have 15 votes for ourselves until we get there. We are we're in a new space, y'all. <laughs> um, so you know what? We can do whatever we want and we're gonna. So now let's reflect. Like I said, you got your short, your words or phrases. I'm just gonna read to you the biggest one. So we have challenging, blessed, exciting, transformative, a roller coaster, chaotic, discouraging, fun, empowering, devastating. My goodness. Um, I felt that one. Um, nurturing, gratifying faith work, off-putting, it called for patience, overwhelming, black cloud lifted, continued progress, chaotic and depressing. Um, as with all exercises that I do, I wanna stop and take a moment and, and understand that um, some of us are not okay, right? And so with that, I hope that this exercise helps to bring people and lift people up a little bit more. And for those of you who are already there, to stay there. Um, but I get it. I get it. And the fact that challenging is the biggest word, you know, uh, my therapist says that growth begins where comfort ends. And, and so sometimes that the challenge hopefully can be ones that help us to grow. And I just two days ago had a situation that enabled me to realize my opportunity for growth <laughs> because I was very uncomfortable, but you know what, here we are. All right. What else do we have? A lot of travel, me too, scary, inspiring, um, thrilling, contemplative, rewarding, introspective, missed opportunities, uh, adventurous, hopeful, a reflection of God, boundaries. Oh, I almost picked that as my word of the year, but I digress. Okay, that being said, I'm going to um, stop sharing for a moment just to see what you're saying. <laughs> Oh, somebody says, I want the confidence of somebody that gets rejected 14 times and keeps on going. Me too. This is what we learned. We've learned that we do not have to, uh, we do not have to think we have imposter syndrome at all because you're just going to keep on going. This has been an interesting time in this past week. All right. One more time. I'm dropping the, the link again in case any of you have missed it. And let's just see where we're going to go next. I wanted to take a minute to actually look at some of the reflections um, of 2022. So um, I start with the challenge and um, there were a lot of them. I don't wanna sort of detail them, just take a look at the screen. I could have seven, eight, nine different screens about the challenges. Um, and I just picked four of my favorite um, things for the good things that happened, but there were so many others. So don't think that just because um, the challenge page is full <laughs> that, that there weren't good things because there were, we know this. Look at this. Look at this, look at this. Um, you know, I'm a lawyer, so I like legal things. I like, um, I love, I love seeing the progress. I love seeing the inspiration. I love seeing the support of black women. Um, yes, it's where my affinity bias kicks in, but I get to do that, so it's, it's all good. Um, so tell me what your, if you have any comments or questions about, 2022, the good things, the bad things, anything else, you can either use the mentee 
um, comments or questions on the slide and I can see it here or you can put it in the chat. Uh, but I do want to take a moment and then we're going to go into you um, reflecting um, for about three to five minutes and asking, I'm going to ask you some questions that will be on the screen shortly about your um, 2022. And this is the lead in to um, us setting those intentions for 2023. So I'll stop sharing. What are you thinking? Um, it's good to remember that good happened. That's right. Like, you know, there's always there's always something that we can be grateful for. And I know that it is hard sometimes, especially when we're in the, in the middle of challenges. However, um, guess what? We don't remember the good things. It becomes really hard to navigate, really, really hard to navigate. And I want us to have um, ease in 2023. That is my intent and hope for all of us is to have ease. Um, Let's see, 2022 was a great setup for 20 or set up for a great 2023. You grow through what you go through, amen. Awareness, awakening, look at this endless possibilities available to us, certainly. There were good things that happened 2022. It's hard to focus on what with the uncertainties, what will happen going forward. You know, recently I'll talk about my therapist a lot because she saves lives, um, other people's lives. Uh, <laughs> um, in that she basically said, we have control over nothing but our response. And sometimes we don't have control over that either, right? And so um, it is a, I take a little gulp there. It is, it's a place for us to reflect because we want control. I, we, I, by we, I mean, I, I love control when I can have it, but um, realizing that I don't have it has been freeing for me because, you know, I'm a child of immigrants. I'm a black woman, I'm a lawyer, I'm a mother, I'm a business owner. I'm in a lot of spaces where um, I'm, I gotta be the go-to. I gotta do all the things. And to think that I have control, man, it's nice. It feels safe, but it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Um, all the things that happen are, are you know, by the grace of God and, um, you know, luck of the eye, whatever else it is. And so I have to honor that. Someone who says that 2022 in a word was exhausting. I would say that while um, for me, I gave it a B, um, I was tired, but in a good way. And um, oh, someone says they have, they currently have, uh, they had COVID on 1 1 and attended the, the, sem and the seminar I did. <sighs> well, it's been a year, and I know that many many folks have um, had to navigate the triple pandemic that we are in, COVID, RSV, the flu, um, just germs in general. And so I wish us all in our intention also health um, and focus and um, joy, you know, yes. Uh, somebody says 2022 ended what was a very hard decade and, and I survived. 2023 opens the door to a very new phrase that can be moved past survival, right? We're going into thriving. Yes, I love it. I agree that I've learned through the pandemic, I have no control, right? Exactly. Because we were not able to skip hands <laughs> and run outside because literally uh, the world was falling apart around us. Okay. So you'll see on the mentee that is asking you about one specific thing, but I'm going to share the slides again because this is your report card. So this is the current assignment. Feel free if you would like to take a picture of the slide. This is something that people often share um, on social, tag me, um, uh, so other people can have the same momentum. So I'm, I'm fine with you doing that if you would like. Um, and, but I want you to take, we're at uh, 220, 220 if you are on the East Coast. Um, we're gonna to work through this until 225. Write these down, type these out. Uh, on the screen, what you're sharing with me, all I need to know is what your, the proudest moment, the proudest accomplishment you had in 2022 was. But for your reflection, go through each of these. You probably won't finish it. Um, these will be shared with you in the resources that you'll get later on. Um, or you can take a picture or a screenshot of the screen. Um, but uh, one of the ones that I tend to focus on is the challenges and what I learned. So someone says that they paid off their mortgage. Shout out to you. Let's go home ownership. And it just made me reflect on, I refinanced my home um, and it was one of the most 
challenging experiences that I've ever had. Carl, who's on here, knows because I complained to him the whole time. <laughs> But I was so annoyed. It basically were like, we want your firstborn child. We want a fingernail. We would also, like, they wanted everything. And I was like, I'm good for it. I swear, you know, it's my house. I live here. I really want it. Uh, and I just hated the fact that it felt so um, invasive and in order to get something that was already my own. And, um, and that for me was a challenge that made me remember that I was not in control too, right? Like I can't, it's my house. It's mine. It's the money that I want and it's my equity, but I can't get it. And it was a good continued lesson, a good continued lesson. Um, another one in terms of the ones I like to reflect on is the one to three people who were supportive of you. So happy that there were um, so many uh, that, you know, filled this number for me. Um, special shout out to um, the, I don't know what the, what's the equivalent of a, of a bromance for girls, go, go man. I don't know what you call it, but Sonia and I, <laughs> um, Sonia celebrated her 50th birthday this year. And I was so happy to be able to go to all of her fets uh, around the country. We celebrated twice in Chicago. We celebrated in New York. We celebrated in, in Philadelphia and um, when I look back on this year, it was some of the best times of joy that I had. And so um, it's a combination of people who are there for you um, and showing up for the people who you love and also experiencing joy. And so um, I'm happy that I had that experience. That was a great 2022 uh, experience. Let's see. Oh, we're getting in some good stuff in terms of what you did in 2022. My son was born. I think I know who you are. And he's our son. Um, took a trip, got into 12 schools. Yes. Oh, let me share something with you all while you are still working on this. So many of you know that I am uh, the proud mother of two delightful children most of the time. And my firstborn, Taryn, TJ, she is a senior in college. And I'm um, oh, sorry, in high school. And she just got into um, six of, of, she's got a list of 13, but six out of the six that she's heard back from, she's got into. And one of those includes her first choice, which is Spelman. And so I'm very excited for her and um, just looking forward to how she's going to change the world. And it's a very humbling thing, especially for those of you who are, um, who are parents or even folks who are, you know, alongside folks, whether they're your godchildren or, or however, who are doing new things. I just feel like the world is her oyster and um, I'm so excited. To that end though, if you know of um, uh, things that I should know, <laughs> please feel free to send me an email, send me a, a DM, whatever it is I need to know. If you have scholarships that you wanna recommend that are, um, are based on her um, academics, please send them to me and I will send them to her. Uh, that is one of my asks for the year is um, to let me know what I need to know in order to support her better as a uh, someone who's going to college. So thanks for that. Thanks for letting me share a little bit of, I guess I can count that as one of my accomplishments, even though it's really hers. And big shout out to one of my good friends from high school and continue to be my good friend, Megan, who was um, instrumental in, in making sure that my daughter did what she needed to do in order to get into college. And I'm very, very grateful that we had a, a go-between <laughs> between us, as many of you know, that sometimes whether you are smart, whether people, other people listen to you or not, whether you are a speaker who literally gets paid to speak and for the expertise, your child will not listen to you. <laughs> my daughter was like, whatever. And so I'm happy to have a friend who will be my translator um, and, uh, and helped her to get into this wonderful position. Okay. Grew business by 30%. That is awesome. Spontaneous trip to the Caribbean. My family. Love that energy. Um, being present for meaningful moments. Wow. Um, being present for meaningful moments in the lives of my friends this year. I often struggle to balance the demands of work and life, but I feel like I got it right this year. What an honor to, number one, be able to realize that you were able to get it right. Um, the word balance for me is a very challenging word. I'm like, is, is it, does it even exist, right? Um, and to really think about feeling regulated is, is you know, um, something my friend Gina Cho talks about often is when you feel dysregulated, your body kind of does this thing where you don't feel good. 
And um, my goal this year was to not feel that, uh, although I did in, at times, but being present helps you to feel regulated, to understand where the good things are and, um, and to help to breathe through the challenges. And in 2021, many of you might remember that I experienced an illness when in 2021 that I didn't share with a lot of people. And um, I spent some time at my dad's house to kind of be in a healing place. And he lives in South Jersey. And he's got this big picture, like it's a glass um, window in the kitchen that you can see everything. He, he, um, he's a birder. So there's, you know, um, bird feeders outside of the window. And there was this bird that would fly um, to get food. And it was a, um, what do you call the red birds again? A red, (laughs) LOL, I'm not a birder, whatever the red birds are. Um, And (laughs) it, the bird had a broken wing. And so I named it Rouge. And I would know it was the bird. Like, it, was, it wasn't broken. It had like a, an injury on it. So you could tell it was um, not, you could tell it was uh, not the way it was supposed to be. And I would keep seeing it. So every time I go there, I'm looking for this bird and I just enjoy the fact, oh, it's a cardinal. That's what it was. <laughs> um, I would enjoy the fact that this bird was a part of my experience. But my father's like, that bird has been here for, I don't know, since you were a teenager, like the bird has been around and I had never paid attention to it. And the slowdown of 2021 and me being ill and then the deliberate being in a present space um, was a helpful um, space. So let me just see what's going on in the chat. I'm gonna, if you haven't taken a picture of this, I know we're past our time for um, reflection, but I wanna see what you're gonna say, what you're saying in the chat. Um, If you haven't taken a picture of the screen, do it now. Okay, good. Don't worry, it's gonna be sent to you in the resources anyway. Let's see what you're saying. Yes, thank you all who, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who knew it was Cardinal. Um, and just a reminder, if you want everybody to see your responses, make sure you set your drop down in the chat to everyone. And then everyone will be able to see it. If not, send it just to me. Um, and look at some of my favorite people in the chat. I'm so excited to see you all here. Um, someone asked me my daughter's interest. Um, I guess I shouldn't say Drake at this time. That's not the right answer. Um, she, she's interested in psychology and in veterinary. She is a do-gooder. She loves the environment and she loves um, animals. So thank you for asking. Let's see. Oh, oh, yes, look at this. First Black woman of color organization to get promoted to associate vice. Shout out to you. This is fantastic. Um. Some actually two people, wow, right back to back, shared that they have gone through a divorce. And I know uh, personally, at least four people who have also um, gone through a divorce. And I'll just say this, um, that is hard. That's hard, that's hard, that's hard. I know it from just being alongside the process with other folks and, um, and sending you a lot of love and good energy and know that this too will get better. And um and that you'll find love again, which is, I think, the the vision that we're looking at, the intention that we want to set, and um, you know, hopefully the the pain is short lived, and that you can navigate this time um, with grace. All right. For those of you who don't know me, and you're like, yes, I am. I get sappy during this time. Someone said they took a solo trip to Africa. Guess what? On my vision board and in my um, bucket list is. Um, that I want to, I've not been to the continent at all. And I want to go, I'm thinking Ghana first, just because I like to party. But <laughs> we'll see where we all end up. Okay. So then any, if you want to share any comments or questions about um, anything we just shared, you can do it in the chat or you can do it on the mentee, but I'm going to keep on going. And this is, this is great. I already feel the energy. There is literally a magic that happens during this session. All right. I thought it would be helpful to show you as we're going into um, moving into the work of 2023, some of what was shared. Um, I did a pre-survey this year, about 100 people responded to it, which was nice. Um, And I asked about what their 2022 theme word was. And as you know, we're going to talk about theme words in a minute. Um, And here's some of the theme words that were um, shared from last year. And just take a look, take a look, take a look, take a look. 
connect, focus, growth. The ones that are bigger are the ones that were repeated more. And you can have the same theme board as somebody else. It's not going to be <laughs> an issue if you do. Um, and I just thought, you know, it was a really good set of words, but it's always the momentum, the energy of what's happening. My theme word for 2022 was engage. And I was everywhere. I engaged with a lot of people and did a lot of stuff. And so I was excited, but I also engaged with myself. Um, learning who the new Paula was, was an effort um, and a, um, a reflection time for me as well. So I took the, the expansion of the word engage and, and did a lot of it. Um, woo. So another share. Um, by someone who indicated that they um, didn't have a divorce, but they did have a breakup of their engagement. Um, and there's a child in, in, in the, the relationship. <sighs> um, that's hard, right? And because there's a lot of energy in what you were hoping for, and I get that. And so I will say what I know for sure is that um, oftentimes we have losses and we, you know, we should, and we absolutely should grieve every single loss because it allows us to go through that process. But, you know, I'm not one of those big positivity people. It's like, everything happens for a reason. You need to smile. But I do know in reflection that you are able to reflect back on why some of the things have happened, even if not in the moment. And, um, I look forward to hearing about, um, the new energy that you have and the relationship that you'll be able to build, um, with your child and then with yourself and then whomever else you bring into your life going forward. So I asked the question, if you were not able to achieve your goals in 2022, tell me why. And I'm going to ask you all that question going, going forward. So take a look at what was said last year. Procrastination, fear, time, distraction, motivation, imposter syndrome. Well, we've already taken care of that one. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> um, self-doubt, clarity, family, doubt, overextending to others. Hi, should we start a club? <laughs> Unsupportive husband, um, health issues, lack of organization, uh, financial security, lack of faith and confidence. Like that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, and that was last year. So you did this already. We did this. So now we're going to go through some of the responses to what uh, you had. You did the con this, you did. I want to know about in three words or phrases right now for you. You'll see it on the mentee slide. List three obstacles that prevented you from accomplishing your 2022 goals. Up to three. Three words or phrases. What are three things that, that prevented you from accomplishing your 2022 goals? Feel free not to put anybody's specific name in the <laughs> on there. <laughs> Um, I want to see what you're saying, how that might differ from what we experienced last year. Right now, the biggest thing on the screen is fatigue. Keep on going. Give you a couple minutes on this one. Wu child, racism. My goodness. Yes. <sighs> My goodness. Yeah. Um, systemic racism. So racism. Uh, Self-doubt, fear frustration. Oh, somebody's the death of their mother. Um, if this is you, my friend, you know that we share, unfortunately, this experience and um, it's, it's hard. The grieving process is hard. Um, but there's joy in the memories as well. And um, I have found that since my mother um, has been gone, um, that it's, she is a constant source of inspiration for me and motivation and, um, and a place in which I set my intentions. And there's a picture of her that's right over here to my right. So that when sometimes I feel sad sitting here in this space, I can just look at her and know that she is, um, sending me good energy from up above. And so, I share that with you as an idea and knowing that your mom loved you and I'm sad that you are hurting and um, I'm looking forward to giving you a big old squeeze when I see you again. All right, other obstacles, lack of discipline, lack of motivation, lack of clarity, lack of energy, 
done too much. Ooh, I know. <laughs> Return to the office. I was waiting. <laughs> Like, I can't get things done in my house because they're making me come back to work. Um, yes, focus on others versus self. Scarcity mindset. Well, we're going to let that one go because I can tell you what I know for sure is when you understand that the world is abundant, that it comes to you. And whether that's in love, actual money, in friendship, in whatever it is, thinking that if somebody else has a win or that you know, there's only a certain amount, that's the wrong way. I know that for sure. Understand that we have limited resources in terms of abundance. And so don't think in lack. If I give you nothing else, know this, that 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 shift, that pivot and understanding that we can be positive in that space. It just changes the world. That's where some of that magic comes from. <laughs> Somebody says money, child. <laughs> let's, 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 let's look forward at what we're going to get and what we're going to bring into the world. Um, Bad habits are your fitness. Um, I will just, again, shout out my trainer and my photographer. He's the same person who is on here. Um, Jay, who is one of those people who has supported me, who is one of my favorite people. And he takes great pictures of me. And he makes sure that I um, am always in discomfort because of squats. So there's, <laughs> there's that. All right, let's keep going. Now, the, the slide that's on the screen, um, is on the Menti screen is going to ask you about your 2023 theme word. I'm going to check what's going on in the chat right now. I can't see it when I'm sharing the slides. So um, before, if you know it already, go ahead and put it on, on the screen. Um, but if you don't, I'm going to walk you through why you need to have one and what the process is. Oh, oh, let me just share in the chat. For those of you who are like, what are you talking about? I'm looking at the screen for um, Menti, which is an anonymous feedback tool. So that's what's right here when I'm looking this way. Um, and so if you are um, wondering what I'm looking at is that I, I'm not sharing the screen because sometimes people will tell me things and I'll miss it and it'll be private. So I want to make sure that they don't see that. So if you can put it on the mentee, use that link and, and actually um, put it on there. Um, yes. Somebody says, yes, yes, I am always sore. It just is not, it's, it, you know, it's all good. I mean, my legs look good. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate you. Um, and uh, Jay, drop your website in there, please. Um, and any of you, if you have something you want to share, this is a place of um, shared community. So feel free if you have a resource or idea, and later on, I'm actually going to ask you about this, put it in the chat. Um, I end up sharing the chat later on, resources from the chat and things that are shared beforehand. So, you know, this is a place for community. All right, what do we have? What do we have? Organize. Uh, yes, Liz, I see you. <laughs> but we look good. That's the most important part. Okay, so for those of you who have never done this exercise, and I know several of you reached out and were like, how do I pick out a, a theme word or a phrase? And you can use a phrase. And, and um, I actually texted with Sonia and, and Caroline, Caroline this morning about their words. And so let's take a look. So resolutions are out right? Resolutions are what we're doing. Well, you know what, this year I'm going to, you know, lose 50 pounds. It, it is sort of a self-fulfilling um, that you put everything into it. And if you don't get it, <laughs> then it hurts. And so um, I like the word to kind of guide you through whatever it is. So the word should be something that is applicable to all areas of your life um, or the one that's the priority for you in this year. Um, and it should be inspirational. Um, and so when you see it, you should know like, oh, I got to get myself right again, right? So it should bring you into that space of remembering this energy that we are um, putting out there. So what's going on? All right. So this is a little bit um, Sage and Erica Badu and, um, you know, <laughs> flowers, but I don't care. Uh, I can promise you this. There are people on here who can attest to this, many actually, that something about this time that we are in right now, this space, this exercise that we're doing collaboratively together shifts our experience. So don't take this lightly. If you haven't chosen your word yet, you are not mandated to choose it now. <laughs> you can choose it later. Again, I send you a handout that will allow you to, um, to think about this later on. And I don't expect for us to go through this whole process and finish it. I want you to do more work after we're done. Um, so 
Think about the energy momentum we're putting out there. And then let's do this. Okay, so right now the, the word, the biggest word is growth. That means that more, more than one person has used that. Abundance is also a word. It's one of my favorite words. Determination, love, limitless. That was one of mine years ago. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, that was a good year. It was actually, limitless was my 2020 word. And even though we were in a pandemic, I have to say the, the take on limitless for me was like limitless in terms of what the opportunities could be. Limitless in, in that even though I was stuck inside the house, I could still have an impact. Um, I, when I was president of MBBA, lived on Zoom and online platforms before that. Um, it was one of my goals to say, hey, in case you can't show up at a place, let's make sure you can uh, you know, interact. So I was already comfortable with being online and being right here. So just, you know, I did things where I didn't feel as constrained, even though I was actually constrained. Let's see other words, grow, discipline, super self-love, organize, embrace, just do it, come through, <laughs> um, relax, pleasure, yes, positive self-talk, always, 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 fall in love with myself. Woo, I read something the other day that says, no one can love you until you love you. And the thing about it is that when you think about self-love or any kind of love, you think of it, or at least I used to think about it as very static. Like, I love you. That's it, right? But um, for those of you who are in a relationship with someone, um, and I've been married now, we're in our 20th year of marriage, you love people as they grow, right? You continue to learn to love them. You choose to love them. And you have to do the same for yourself, Right. Uh, as I mentioned, when I experienced the illness, I had to learn who new Paula was and start to learn to love her. I miss old Paula, but old Paula was fun. I love old Paula, but I had to get from that to new Paula and find the new fun again. So there's, um, I get that because immediately you might think to yourself, oh, that means you didn't love yourself before. No, in my mind, it's you got to learn to love the new you and whoever that is from the shifts that you've had. So good. Uh, forgiveness of self, great economy. <laughs> yes, let's please focus on joy, intentionality, lean into me. Yes, get her done. <laughs> I like it. Um, grace for myself, time out of depression, thriving. So I'll give you another um, another piece of advice for my therapist. Um, my therapist would say, you shouldn't say I am depressed. You shouldn't say I am happy. You should say. I am experiencing depression. I'm experiencing sadness. I'm experiencing happiness. I am experiencing joy. I'm experiencing pleasure. Why? Because it, it speaks to the fact that it's not your forever state. It's your current state and that it could change. Um, and that means that you should be present in it and know that if it's a hard one, that it's going to change and it'll get better. And that if it's a good one, that you acknowledge it in your presence of it. So these are the words that I had in the years that I had them. So 2019 was manifest. 2020, as I told you, was limitless. And uh, Malika, you'll remember this when I forced you to do zip lining with me. <laughs> um, and this was, um, I don't know where this was. We went on a cruise and um, I just like doing that. Um, that was before I was really, really working out with Jay. So the, this year's was like a little more cut. Um, and then connect was in 2021 and then engage in 2022. So now you know, and you told me yours, drum roll please. This is my 2023 theme word. It is advance. And thank you for asking. Yes, Jay did take this picture of me <laughs> um, at the MBBA holiday party, which is one of my favorite events of 2022. And so um, I, look forward to advancing all things with you. That means our growth, our health, um, our impact. It's a word that can be applied to sort of everything and I love it, uh, but I truly want to advance my professional development and who I engage with and how I engage with, um, uh, with them. And so I'm excited. And to that end, I got something else to tell you. Guess what is coming? I'm happy to announce my new podcast, which is called Branding Room Only, which is going to be um, released this year, um, this month. And so you'll remember last year from my vision board, if you recall, 
that I had um, podcasting and, and having a podcast, being on podcast in my vision board. And I was on podcast last year and I um, established this um, branding room only. Isn't that the greatest name? For those of you who know me, know that you know, I talk about personal branding all the time. So the um, podcast is going to be about how people have built their brands. And it is something that you can use for sort of everyone and everything because your brand is what helps you to navigate um, the world. You can have whatever skill set. You can have the same skill set as other people, but your brand is what makes you special and makes you different and um, and unique. And so I look forward to number one, hopefully having you as listeners and um, helping you suggest folks to um, to have to be on the podcast. I start my interviewing process next week. I'm so excited, um, and I look forward to this being fantastic. So thank you for supporting me through this as um, one of my goals. All right, let's go. So now I know your theme word. I wanna to talk to you about why I changed this from the goal setting session to intention and goal setting. So um, last year, you might recall that I said that I was going to do a mid-year goal setting check-in um, webinar, and then I canceled it. <laughs> and folks were like, are you okay? And I just was tired. I'm gonna stop sharing. I was tired. I, I was like, you know what? I don't feel like, doing this. And so I didn't. And one of the things that I learned to do was to set boundaries in a much better way. And so it was, I don't feel like doing it. Um, and so I'm not going to, I sent out resources, I supported, right. But I didn't want to do the exercise. And it was important for me to acknowledge when something didn't feel right, but also that I had set a goal to, that I was going to do this. And then I didn't do it. And I was like, oh my gosh, again, I, I'm a West Indian child. Like we, we, we get things done. <laughs> so, so, so the fact that I didn't get it done, I was very like, oh, I can't believe people are going to be so disappointed. And I kind of beat up on myself a little bit. And then I stopped. And what I want for those of you, because I know who is on this webinar for the most part, some of the, my friends, what is happening in your lives right now? I want to say to you, the reason why intentions are better than goals or in addition, not better than, but they should accompany goals is that intentions speak to the journey, right? We are saying right now, this is what I want to do. This is what I plan to do. And there's a process in acknowledging the journey, even if you don't actually meet the goal. And this is important to think about because you shift once you say, this is what I'm going to do even if you don't actually get there. Now, of course, I want you all to meet your goals. Listen, we have done some spectacular things in this past five years in this process, um, and I look forward to us continuing to do so. But I don't want the fact that some people may not actually achieve the goals they set to be a hindrance to us having momentum and manifestation throughout this process. So that's why I decided to make it intention and goal setting. And I have a question. What are the steps to intentional goal setting? What do you suggest to prepare for the intentional goal setting? So I can tell you, oh, somebody said, thanks. I, thank you. The dress is dressed in joy. Um, thanks again for that shout out. Okay. So we're going to get into goal setting in a moment, some of the best practices of it, but I'll just answer your question for you right now. Um, you have to sit with yourself. I think sometimes people will say, oh, I, I want to make a billion dollars. Yes, me too. Right? But, you know, when you go into the goal setting um, best practices, which we're going to get into, you have to really be thoughtful and realistic about that. And I don't say realistic in that you can't get a billion dollars. Yes, you can. But it is honoring who you are, honoring what resources, whether that is time, treasure, talent, and what you want, and then letting that energy happen and then setting those specific goals. It is not a fly by night type thing. It is a very well thought out thing. And, um, and that's one of the things I encourage people to do. You want to, you want to really put effort and energy and spirit into it. Okay. So we're going to talk more about it and you can ask more questions. <clears throat> um, all right. So let's keep going. So on the slide we have right now, I want you to answer this question. The question is, oh, I feel as I'm not sharing. <laughs> Hold on, look at this. Sometimes the words don't resonate for people. So I thought I would ask for you to share a phrase or a quote that inspires you. So tell me 
you can put it in the chat, you can put it on the, on the mentee screen. What is a phrase or a quote that inspires you or reflects your values? What do you have? And someone um, who wrote NA, you don't have to write NA. If you don't have anything, just hold on the screen until um, the next question comes up that you do wanna answer. And take a look at my mug, which is a Deerfield alumni mug. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> All right, this too shall pass. Nothing changes until I change. Integrity. What else? You don't have to write NA for those of you on here. Just, just don't write anything. If you have, if you have no question or comment at this time, write nothing. You're good. I can do hard things. Nothing beats a failure but a try. Ooh, ooh, this is a good one. Schedule your pleasure because pain always schedule it's itself. Guys, want to sit with that? I'm, you know what? I'm going to schedule my pleasure. Come on. The only way out is through. Big doors swing on small hinges. I knew that asking this question was going to get me some good stuff. Don't let perfect get in the way of done. Ugh. Stop. Stop. I'm in this. And you, I feel like there's a, a meme that says, I'm in this tweet and I don't like it. <laughs> and I felt, I felt like that. Reach for what you long for. Yes. I am enough. Living my life like it's gold, like it's golden. Shout out to Jill Scott. What doesn't get measured can't be, can be quantified. Where there's a will, there's a way. Rest is resistance. Yes, yes. Last year, for those of you who joined us on the Joy, the Joy um, webinar, I talked about my rest is my way of um, persistence as well as resistance. No is a complete sentence. Blessed is she that believes for there shall be a performance of those things told her. Ooh. Do what you can with what you have. I matter. Oh, I'll say it again. No is a complete sentence. All right, good. Y'all are killing this. All right, great. Let's keep going. My mother, who I pretty much talk about every year, she said, or every day, I should say, she says, you can be the wind or you can be the leaf. And this is something that I think about often. And essentially it is the concept of, you know, you can either decide what you're gonna do or you can let something happen to you. And this webinar, this experience that we're having together is us being the wind. We are saying, we're setting our intention, right? The leaf just kind of goes wherever. The wind decides. Um, and, and so, um, shout out to my mom for putting that into my mind and letting me know, um, oops, letting me know that that's something that I can always sort of um, reach for and think about. Um, if you, if, we're, if the, the slide changed for you, just hit a refresh for you. It should still say questions and comments um, on here. Diamonds are made with pressure. Just keep swimming. 80% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Okay, just talk directly to me, why don't you? Um, we can become just by doing acts, tempered, temperate by doing temperate, temperate acts, brave by doing brave acts. I love that. All right. So, and for those of you who know, um, my business tagline is engage your hustle, which is essentially my theme, my mantra, um, my inspiration that just says that even if you are already fabulous, you can kick it up a notch. And if you, um, have a goal, have an intention, do it, engage that hustle. And I don't believe in hustle being hard. I believe in hustle just being um, not stagnant, not stagnant. Okay, let me see what you got in the chat and then we'll keep going. What are y'all saying? Let's see. All feelings are for feeling. Oh, that's good, you know. Diversity is like a democracy. It is a process, not outcome. Yes, 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 yes. These are great. Keep moving forward. I'm more than good enough. Oh, even the darkest night will end, 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 and the sun will rise. Les Miserables. Fun fact, Sonia, one of the best dates I've ever been on was to go see that. So I see Les Mis. <laughs> and no, it was not with my husband and he gets mad every time I say it, but it's true. It was the best day ever. Okay. Um, someone sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. Yes. Shout out to the ancestors. 
My mother said to me, if you are a soldier, you will become a general. If you are a monk, you will become the Pope. Instead, I was a painter and became Picasso. Pablo Picasso. Oh, I love that, Daryl. Thank you. Ah, Y'all look good. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go. So we're going to talk about goals um, because that's what we're here for. So let's run through this. Uh, goal setting. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you're just not setting goals willy nilly, right? Not like one goal I have is to um, get a hug and a picture with Idris Elba, right? That is an actionable goal. <laughs> um, I've actually already done this, but he wouldn't let me take a picture. It's a long story. When you see me in person, I'll tell you all about it. Um, so, goals, they should be specific, right? Not, I want to be great. I do want to be great, but not just, I want to be great, right? I want to be great at X by when, measurable, right? How am I going to know that I hit it? Because I made it measurable. I made it tangible, attainable, right? I can get this. So I I love this attainable because it helps to kind of give us a little, you know, um, boundary around it. But I also don't want there to be any boundaries around it. I think that you can do whatever you want to do. I do. And so uh, don't think of the attainable as, as anybody trying to rein you in. This is your goal. Relevant? Yes, yes. I mean, I think the R switches up depending on what what uh, what these acronyms you're using. So um, I like relevant because it, you know, it should be connected to who you are and what you want and what your what your overarching vision is for yourself. But take it or leave it. Time bound. When are you going to do it by? When? When is it going to happen? Right, that allows you to take benchmarks to know if you're actually doing what you need to do to get there, and that's important. Okay, so on your piece of paper or on your computer or what have you, what I'm going to want you to do is to write three to five goals for 2023, and then stretch goals. Now, again, you don't have to write them all right now. Again, you can take a picture of this. It's going to be sent to you via email. I promise you we'll have it by tomorrow at noon. <laughs> I promise you. Um, maybe even sooner than that because my admin is the bomb. Um, but you got to write them down. And I have had people fight with me over this in years. Oh, you know, I just know them in my head. So many of you are either in the law, law related, or have had a lawyer. Just kidding. <laughs> um, there's something about writing something down that makes it tangible, that makes it actionable. And so you got to write it down. You got to write it down. So I'm going to go through and talk about personal goals and professional goals, you know, in subsequent slides. So you don't have to start writing down now. This is just the assignment that you're going to have generally. So what I want, and I'm going to ask you on the slides shortly about one goal from each of the professional and personal. So be prepared. Um, so at least do one. Remember, you want to make it, what, what do you want to make it? Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound. Okay. I just felt this, oh my goodness. I don't know if you all just felt that, but I just felt this really like electric energy that just happened just now. Ooh, okay. I can't wait to see what some of these goals are because the fun part about this is that I asked you, where is it? I asked you what goals you achieved already in, in from 2022. And y'all said some fantastic things. Actually, I'll read some of them while you are um, thinking about your goals. So whew, I asked in the pre-survey for the people who filled it out, I asked one to two pro professional or personal goals that you accomplished since 20, since January, 2022. Whew, okay. <clears throat> um, completed the triathlon. Um, let's see. Had a baby. I'm excited. Okay. I can't wait to meet him. Um, became financially savvy and used my network more. What else? Um, promoted to manager. Um, left my job of 12 years for a position with a company that values mental health and offers a supportive work environment. Snaps to that. Come through. Let, let's do this. Um, personal. Bought a house. Um, oh, someone asked. Okay. Give a, an example of a stretch goal. So, stretch goals are are ones that, um, let's just say you had a goal, like your goal achieving was on a scale of one to 10. Um, most people will hit, will go to something that's around a five, right? A stretch goal is usually like a nine, 10 or off of that chart for you. Something that is attainable, still hits those marks, but it is harder. Something that's gonna make you um, 
make you a little bit more uncomfortable, be a little bit scary. You can still do it and you should still do it. Uh, that's a stretch goal. So I don't want to give you, I, I mean, for example, for me, a stretch goal, well, I don't, I guess, oh, it is a stretch goal for me. Um, I'm going to take an improv class this year. Uh, it's a stretch goal for me because I, um, I like things to be, I like to know what's going to happen, right? I'm going to talk about the control issue. <laughs> um, and improv is literally not that. And I'm used to being on uh, stage. I'm used to um, having a, you know, knowledge of what I'm going to do. And it's a little bit scary. It's actually a lot scary for me, but I'm still going to do it. That's why I'm doing it. I want to push myself to do something that is going to make me better. And in general, um, improv makes you a better speaker. Improv makes, makes you a better communicator. And I'm looking forward to doing that. And so that's one of uh, the stretch goals that I have established for myself in, in this year. And I will do that by September of this year. Ah, put it out into the universe because I don't want to say I'm going to do it before the end of the year because um, guess what? The year, last year when I did that and said the end of the year, the year got wild really quickly. Um, all right. So I hope you're writing your goals down still. Uh, let's see. Appeared on a podcast as a guest. Published my first book. Started my own business. New job. What else did you say? Um, named as 2022 Woman of Distinction by the Philadelphia Business Journal. I know who you are. Yay. Um, completed the NYC Marathon. Uh, made sure that the son could swim independently. Very important. Started the fabulous new, uh, new job in 2022, May 2022, which was a number one goal set during the seminar in the beginning of 2022. Yes. Broke a weight loss plateau. Come on. You are killing it. Um, see the job offer, married the man of my dreams. Yes. Look at you. Uh, completed a course. Let's see. Try more yoga. Achieve one year of sobriety. Listen, I'm just telling you, when I tell people that this is a magic that happens, listen or not, look, we are out here. But those of you who are going to be watching this on the recording, um, I offer to you to send me an email. If you want to answer one of these questions, tell me some things, send me an email. I love getting those. Um, people tell me throughout the year when they have reached their goals. And I put this recording on YouTube because it is my love um, offering to the world. It's a good energetic space to start the year off with. And it helps me and it also helps y'all. So, all right, now it is time on the slide. It says, please provide one professional goal you have for 2023. So on you can put it in the chat if you'd like, but um, um, you can put it on the mentee, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I want to see what you're talking about. What are we going to do? Remember, it's got to be specific. It's got to be time bound, right? Relevant, attainable. What, what are we going to do? So somebody said, get a new job. Get a new job by when? Take a class. Take a class by when? Right? Um, work intentionally on one goal at a time. Yes, I love that. So yes, we, I don't want you, this is a, that's a good point. And, and I get to it sort of closer to the end of, of the session and saying what you should know is I am not at all telling you that you have to <laughs> complete all of these goals in the next five minutes. That's just not going to work, right? And it not that's not attainable. Um, I don't know how many of you, I, I'm going to age myself, but that's okay because I'm so cute. Um, is I used to watch Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie when I was little. And um, I, I used to love the fact that, she, that they can make things happen magically. And I kind of feel like I'm like, do, 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 do with my nose with all of you. So no, let's do this. <laughs> Somebody says, you know, oh, good, because I don't want to feel old. Although my daughter then definitely says that I'm old. Getting all A's this spring semester. Yes, Ian. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. I love it. Uh, finish my book and be on the New York Times bestselling author. Oh, I just felt that energy. Absolutely. And we're going to go to your book signings. We're going to talk about how we set this intention here. And I'm going to get a special book signed. I can't wait. Um, start law school. Yes. Yes. Start law school this fall. Like, when are we doing this? When are we going to do this? I want you to look at your goals and make sure you're writing these down too, right? So that, um, you know, meet the sponsorship goals for my organization by September 30th. Oh, 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 oh I like it. Learn a new skill each month. I'm going to kick it up a notch. Learn a new skill each month and what? Learn a new skill 
that will help me in my work, or that will help me per uh, personally or both, like make it a little more tangible. Engage a new client by the end of the first quarter. Yes, but I like February. Let's do that. Come on. You can get a new client before then. Call me. Let's see. Um, strengthen my network and networking skills by speaking professionally with one new person per month. Oh, what a beautiful goal. Look at that. Look at that. So if you're going to speak to one new person per month, I'm going to help engage you a little bit more and say, that means I want you to reach out to four though. <gasps> Go on at least 10 dates. Linda, you may not know this, but I am also love coach Paula. Ask a friend because they will tell you. Um, and uh, I have a special way of folks setting intentions when it comes to relationships. So I'm glad you asked and said that because I'll walk it through during the Q&A session, which is going to be in 24 minutes. I'm going to shift to questions. Um, Published two articles by December, 2023. What? September. Get out of here. <laughs> you can do it before that. A 20% salary increase by October 1st. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now, because I know who's on this webinar, I would love to see some things about um, starting your new law firm by X date and having 10 core clients. Um, let's see who else I know who's on here. Uh, I would love to see having um, the Bar Association increases membership by 20%. Um, I would love to see, uh, oh, I love this one, secure an agent and get a book deal by July, 2023. Ooh, um, I'm going to love, there are several people on here who are going to be passing the bar. So I want to see that on here, right? Get a pay raise of $10,000 by the end of February, 2023, and then take Paula to dinner. I added the last part. <laughs> Uh, yes. Ooh, oh, February is my birth month. February is also my birth month, which is Valentine's Day is my birthday. Shout out to the love children out here. Um, run the Charlotte around the crown 10K in less than 75 minutes this summer. I know who you are. And I honor every time I see you running online, I'm like, thank him for running for me. Cause I won't run unless somebody's chasing me. And I'm just probably going to sit down and be like, take it, take it. Take all this stuff. I hate running. Get on a 40 under 40 list. Um, okay, let's think about which ones. Let's I want to get on a specific 40 under 40 list. Like right? some of these lists are a little bit get on a a, a well-renowned 40 under 40 list and then amplify the selection by sharing on social media. Um, self-promotion is my favorite emotion. Okay. These are great. I love these. Um, I didn't see, I only saw a couple ones around love. Well, I guess as a professional, you probably shouldn't be doing love ones. <laughs> as a labor and employment attorney. <laughs> let's go to that next one. Okay. All right. Let's see. What do we have? Ooh, make a therapy appointment by February and have at least sessions in 2023. So love that. Love that. And what I would um, encourage you to do is to start reaching out now because obviously with the momentum of the new year, a lot of therapists get a lot of outreach at the beginning of the year. And so you want it so that, that if 20 February is going to be your goal to start that the sessions, then what you want to do is start the outreach now so that you can vet some people. And when you're choosing a therapist, don't just choose, the, like talk to more than one person, the same as, like, as getting a coach. You want to make sure there is a connection um, and ask about how they supported other people before. Um, don't just go on a, a recommendation. Make sure that you are connecting. And I have had the great opportunity to refer my therapist to several people and um, and some people who have been like, she's not okay for me, but she's great for you. And that is fine. That's fine. Let's see. Write my, write my, book, my first book draft by the beginning of the fourth quarter of the year. I will share that with you. Let's do that. Because as many of you know, for the five years I have been, this book has been dangling around, um, but I'm closer. I'm closer. Um, you should know that I'm going to be using the interviews I do on the podcast as some of the, the content within the book too. So I'm doing it. I'm getting there. Speak up for myself and more at work beginning now in January. Yes. And I also want to set the goal as if you felt like you couldn't speak up before and that you still aren't able to, maybe we need to find that new person. We need to find that new place because um, I want us to be living and thriving in places where uh, they understand our value. Now, okay, here's a couple that I should have been, I thought I was showing the screen, but I was just showing my dress, just enjoy. Some examples, a couple of these are mine. <laughs> 23 podcast guests. 
um, yes, I'm, I, I'm hoping that I get a lot more than that. I love talking to people. I am an extrovert, extrovert, and I love to talk. So hopefully that, that won't be an issue. And I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people in a lot of different industries who talk about their brand so that it's for me, a networking, hopefully also a business development, but definitely a content and a, um, spreading the word. I call myself a personal branding evangelist and I am, and I want to talk about the power of that brand of building your brand. All right. So now we talked about professional now. On the slide, you'll see on the mentee slide of the goals you just listed, of the goal you listed, what are the challenges of the professional goal you listed? What are the challenges that you uh, think you might encounter um, when trying to accomplish them? So think about what you put on there. What are the challenges? What might make it challenging for you to meet the goal? I can tell you for me, some of the goals that I have that I've set out, I already know I'm grateful that I'm busy this first half of the year already. And so finding time and energy to do those things that I have set out to do is, is going to be for me a challenge. <clears throat> Let's see, we have time and resources always will be there, managing my time. We're gonna talk about some, some things that you can navigate with this. Lack of motivation, okay. Let me hold on to that one and the energy. So the person who just said it and, and wrote that in there, I want you to take this experience that we are in right now as a part of your shifting towards greater motivation, right? We're going to use this and say, this is the momentum that I need to start to do what i got to get done to meet my goals, okay? Underselling myself, people not seeing my value. I don't even know who you are. I know that you're wrong. They will see your value if you are confident about it. And so if it's the self-work that you need to do, or you need to have your squad to tell you how great that you are, do put those things in place because um, I, I, I know for sure that most people devalue themselves or undervalue themselves and, it, and they are fantastic and special and they should not be doing that. And so fear around money and getting into the known, unknown. So uh, many of you know, or, you know, I, I post about her often, um, I have my financial coach is uh, Jaquette Timmons. Shout out to Jaquette. Go to JaquetteTimmons.com. She's the best. Many of you are fans of her, hers. And um, she talks, she's a financial behaviorist. So she really goes into what our feelings are about money <laughs> and then um, why we have them and then how to navigate around them. She also has a wonderful podcast. It's called More Than Money. So just listen to that as well. Um, I can say that even stating that you have a fear around money puts a, an energy in the space. So it is um, navigating my past fear of money and finding my new um, comfort with it, right? You see how we shift that up? We shift it a little bit, right? It's not going to be, I have it. I experienced it before. Going forward, I'm not going to, right? We're, we're making this new momentum, new intentions. <laughs> uh, somebody says to kids, so I have learned to, um, to maximize my children's um, enthusiasm meaning without breaking any of the laws around child working is to help them help me um, as opposed to being a hindrance. And so assuming that they want, you know, assuming that they are a little bit, even if they're toddlers, they can still help pick something up, clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. We're going to do that, right? But um, don't, you know, think of them as an asset in how you navigate as opposed to challenge. And I know that they are challenges. Please, I have to. Um, Fear that I won't look smart. I'll make mistakes. So we're talking about a little bit of um, lack of confidence and some imposter syndrome, and I reject those for you. Um, you are smart. We all get to make mistakes because we're human. And if you look visibly awkward or uncomfortable, then guess what? You will fix it the next time. Some of the things that we make these like heavy, heavy things are ones that um, we should not let weigh us down. We should understand that even if they were to happen, that they are not the end, right? They are just a learning lesson on our path as opposed to the end. We get to make mistakes. We should make mistakes. Time, motivation, procrastination. So uh, I have ADHD. It's very hard for me to concentrate sometimes when I'm not medicated. My husband had to make sure that I was like, he's like, do it today. Um, 
And I have put a lot of systems and structures in place in order to help me to navigate being a business owner, a mother, a friend, a daughter, a sister, right? All of these, these pieces. And it's still hard. So give yourself some grace. Okay. So now we're going to do your personal goals. So you're going to look at the slide. I want to see one to three personal goals. So on the slide, I just want to see one, one personal goal. Just give me one. But you're going to write down for yourself one to three. One to three personal goals. So this is where the love should come in if it's on your radar. Um, or even a recommitment to love for those of you who got some by these in your life. Um, I will remind you again um, about the fact that I um, have made a commitment to making sure that my legs look nice in the summertime by working out in the morning with Jay at 5.45. Well, it's really six, but I got to get up at 5.45 so I can be dressed and all that stuff. Um, and so uh, if he hasn't put it in the website, I'm still going to put it in the resources later on. Uh, but he is fantastic and a really great motivator. And it's on Zoom just like this. Uh, he wants you to be on camera so he can see your form and all that good stuff. I don't like to, people to see me early in the morning. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is to be there and get this getter done. Uh, and as we climb on the um, age range, you know, I just read something this morning that said, you're the oldest you're ever going to be and you're the youngest you're ever going to be right now. And I was like, oh, I don't like, <laughs> okay, fine. Um, is to, to just remember that we got to take care of our bodies uh, as you know, having experienced illness. I can't tell you enough about um, really taking the time to rest and to take um, care of yourself. And that's mentally and that's physically um, and that's spiritually. So meet my life partner by the end of the year. Whew, I love that. I love that. So remember what I told you about me being love coach, Paula? Um, whomever you are, literally detail out what they look like even if they don't end up being looking like that person, you have to kind of put the energy out that this is who you want. There's something that happens when you do that. And so I encourage you to do it. So this is not like, oh, I don't want to seem like I'm superficial, blah, blah, blah. No, that for me, it was like, oh, he is tall, he's dark skin, he's got a goatee and he works out. Like I was right. But my husband is tall. He does work out now. He's got a goatee, but he's light skin. Like he's not what I said, but he, but the momentum and the energy around it um, got me my 20 year marriage and my continued love. I choose to love every single day. Um, but I set that energy and that intention. And I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. When you make it like, oh, I just want to be loved by anybody. Then you might end up being loved by anybody who, <laughs> right? I'm like, I want you to actually, right? Like, don't just say anybody, <laughs> just say something good. See 12 plays this year. Um, if it's you who I think it is, then I want to go too. Let's go let's do this. Um, save $25 every week for 30 weeks. Yes. And don't make me do the math because I don't know how much that will be. But yes, yes, I want that too. A minimum of 20 minutes of exercise five days a week. Love it. Do those squats. The legs will thank you. Um, save and invest 20% of my income. Wash my face each night. <laughs> oh, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle. Um, I have a good friend who uh, whose spouse um, is a dermatologist, and <laughs> when um, she talked about the uh, dirt that ends up being on your pillowcase, that was enough. I was I was sold by. I was like, oh, I will never not wash my face again. It is wild what you put on your face, and then what you like see is not cool. Don't do it. Um, okay. Ooh. I just saw a good one in my DMs. I love this. Yes. Okay. There's some good, 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 good energy coming out here for these personal goals. Reach weight loss goal before my birthday, April, 2023. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and when you, if you want to make it more specific so that you can make it tangible, say a percentage, right? If you don't want to say the specific number, say percentage, whatever, whatever it is to add a number in there too. Read 25 books by BIPOC woman by 12, 12 31, 20, uh, 2023. Uh, um, I hope audible, audible, audio books go in there because I, I have, ever since law school, it's been really hard for me to hold a book in my hand and actually read it, but audio books are my jam. Okay. Develop better sleep patterns. 
um, and habits and patterns. So I want that to be more tangible. That means commit to going to bed 15 minutes earlier than I normally do for at least two weeks and then pushing back another 15 minutes, right? So make it tangible. Take six vacation this, this year. I love it. Can I come? Let's go. Let's go. I want to travel. Write a play. Ooh. Yes, write a play by when. What kind of support do you need? Um, ooh, meet my life partner, advance in my age group placement in races, break my current cycling time. Love that. Love it. Let's do it. Sign up for more dance classes to start in February. Oh, all right. It's almost like you all know. So my other thing is this, so many of you who may know me know that I often say I cannot be choreographed and that just doesn't mean dancing, but I can't. <laughs> but I uh, have learned not to say can't. So I'm also going to take a, um, a class, a dance class this year. So I don't know if it's gonna be salsa or ballroom or something, but I'm gonna take a dance class this year. Um, uh, I am on a foundation board, a family foundation board. And we did a... Um, we gave a grant to an organization in New York City called Dancing Classrooms. Um, you may be familiar with them because they did um, a documentary called Mad Hot um, Ballroom. And seeing these kids dance, I was like, I can, you know what? I can't say I can't because these kids can do it. I can do it too. I have rhythm. <laughs> Sign up for an Afrobeat class. Thought, well, I could do an Afrobeat class too. Hmm. I just thinking of like the literal, I, it's hard for me to be led. Like, welcome to my world. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to, I am going to do that. I'm going to do that. That will be by the end of the year because I, I have to be, have a cadence to do this. Um, learn how to roller skate. Oh, good. Um, I love roller skating. I used to roller skate at Empire or roller skate rink in Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn when it existed. And, um, I did a Girl Scout trip there once and my mother, this girl ran over my foot, my hand. Um, and I never forget. I saw my mother, she turned into a, a real Jamaican woman and she like, grabbed the girl. She's like, but apologize. And I was like, yeah, my mom's good. Okay. Anyway, um, that being said, I'm reflecting. Okay. Ooh, somebody asked about ADHD resources. I have great ones. Yes. It'll be, um, it will be in the resources that I share. So I'm going to make a note to myself that I'm going to send you some. I absolutely do. Um, one of them is this, this clock that allows you to set time to do things and it beeps at the different time in increments. So I'll put the link to that and it helps me to get things done. Um, the clock, yes, the clock is the best. And I often will go off on a tangent if I don't set myself up with some time. And it helps me to do my Pomodoro, which we're gonna talk about shortly. All right. Um, how can I get my spouse on board with growth and big challenges I would like to accomplish? How do I work through his limited time, uh, limited mindset and want to keep me or him safe? Okay. So I will share with you what uh, my therapist, again, she's the best, says to me, which is that um, your stuff is your stuff and their stuff is their stuff. And yes, while you interact together, you get to have your own stuff. And that um, a relationship, a marriage is two individuals that come together to have a collaborative, but you don't have to stop being your individual to be in a relationship. So that's my answer. So that means that I travel alone sometimes. That means that I do fun things for myself sometimes and that we do things together as well. So that for me, my answer would be that, that someone who loves you, right, will know whether it's hard for them or not, that you need to be you. And in order for you to be the best y'all, that you have to be the best you. So I hope that that helps to answer your question. All right, let's see a couple others. Um, all right making partner. So we're bringing a personal and a professional. It's all good. I'm loving it. Find a loving partner by the fall. Yes. And I love that. I love the loving piece, right? Because you could say, I want to find somebody, but you want to make sure you specify the things and the areas in which you need this. Um, yes, I will share my therapist name and I will also share links to um, resources to find a therapist um, as well. And when I share the resources, you got it. Okay. So of the personal goals that you listed, what are some of the challenges to accomplishing them? So we just heard one, right? If you have um, a spouse, a life partner, or even family members, child, don't even get me started, that um, may be hindrances, boundaries, or um, may be scared to have you achieve some of your goals because it will shift some of their comfort. You know, that is challenging. Yes, I also have a great list of coaches, which is on my website, which um, I will also share in the resources. And um, 
I, all I want us to do is to make sure that we are sharing uh, resources with each other so that we can be great together. Okay, finding the time. So I will say this, a lot of times when people will say, I don't have time, I um, push back by asking them what was the last thing that they binge watched. <laughs> and that's not to say that you shouldn't get to binge watch because you absolutely should. But my way of asking that is basically saying, I want you to put the same energy into what you want as into what you kind of fall into, right? I will sometimes just sit here and like, la, 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 and I'm like, what did I just do for two hours? I want us to be strategic and intentional about our goals. And that means that you have to put the time in there that you want. So that means that where, because I want to have good looking legs, I want to get up at 5.45 in the morning. Do I want to get up at 5.45 in the morning? No, I don't. Dr. Scott knows I don't want to be there. <laughs> but I am. Right, right, Victoria. It's That's how you are the wind. That's how you, you decide what you're going to do. You have to remember a couple of things that I've shared here. Growth begins with comfort ends. So you cannot grow into the person who you want to be, get the things that you want if you don't get a little uncomfortable. That means making sacrifices in places that you may not want to, but that's where the, that's where the work is. All right, let's see. So a lot of people are saying time. I excel at the gym, but suffer in the kitchen. Can I just tell you something? I don't know how many of you um, use HelloFresh. So I, <laughs> I do not cook. I believe that um, you should cook if you um, love cooking, if you want to do it and you have joy in cooking, but if not, you can taste that you don't, right? Um, and you can taste when I don't want to cook something. But HelloFresh, and they do not sponsor me anything like that, but I'm telling you that I love, I feel like I'm a chef because I'm like, I got these carrots they sent me, I could do this. And it helps me to feel like I'm adding value in this way. I don't do it often because it's a bad use of my time and of my energy. And that was where one of the places where I have outsourced my kids. And I'm like, yo, you know what a great thing for you to do is to cook dinner, yay. And they do. So um, being a solo parent is a big challenge to start a relationship and balancing time, keeping my child safe and courage and love. Absolutely. Um, I'll say this to you. Um, think about who you can find, who you can uh, trust and who you can take the time by you know, getting a babysitter or having family members support you. And um, if you are in the New York City area and you're looking for a babysitter, my daughter is a babysitter. She is CPR certified for infants and children. Um, but there's also lots of these places that, um, that have list serves of folks who can do this. And I know it's hard sometimes to leave your little babies with somebody else, but you deserve to have time and, um, and to set some of those goals for yourself. And children um, thrive with parents who thrive for themselves. So let me jump down off of my, um, <laughs> right, but it's true. Yes, yes, uh, yes, getting uncomfortable is hard. Nobody wants to be uncomfortable, but when you know that that's where the shift is, we have to. I mean, it's, it's like what I do when it comes to um, the, you know, the diversity and inclusion work that I do and even the professional development work that I do because it requires a shift. Nobody wants to do that. They're like, it feels good here, we're good. All right, so quickly as we are um, winding down and going into strictly the Q&A piece of this is some do's and don'ts, right? You need to have support. You guys be specific. We talked about that and you need support. So I'm a big fan of a coach. So I have a financial coach. I also have a, you know, I have Jaquette and I also have Lushi who I'll put her information in the, in the link too. So she makes sure that all of my business books are fine and good. And she brings good like crystal energy <laughs> um, and it was really hard for me to be like, oh, I'm going to outsource all of this because I thought of it as an expense as opposed to an investment. But for me, especially as a business owner and for somebody who does not do these things well, acknowledging that I don't do everything well, whew, let me talk about that control piece and thank you again to my therapist, was important because that then helped me to say then I should be outsourcing it because me trying to do it is a bad use of my time. Like cleaning the bathroom. I shouldn't do that. Get out of here. It's all, it's all good, right? Because right? It's not a good use of my time and I don't want to do it. And also energetically, I'm just not as good as it as I should be. Like the comet whole thing or the West Indian thing that it jumped over me. Um, okay. So don't overwhelm yourself with what I'm saying. <laughs> don't overwhelm yourself with what you want. Have the goals, understand with setting the intention and moving the momentum towards it, but you might have a setback. And the reason why we are shifting from just goals to that intention is because remember, everything you do on your way to it is actually achieving. 
as opposed to being a little true setback. Um, celebrating your wins. So many of you, any of you who heard me speak and do any kind of branding session or networking or business development know that I talk about using, having your wins um, list. You have got to have your wins list. When something good happens, when somebody gives you a compliment, when you, you know, you did right, when you get a good parking spot, whatever it is, put it in your wins file because there are days that are hard. And those days that are hard, you need something to lift you up and do that by having that win. So you put it in the jar, you have it in the folder, you put it wherever, but have it. I have mine on a, um, a, a gallery in my phone. I also have a, a folder in my, um, my Google Drive. So, um, so the slide that's up now that says, what commitments are you willing to make to achieve your goals in 2023? Um, someone put not applicable and I am gonna push back because absolutely it's applicable. You have got to commit in order to achieve your goals. So what is it that you're going to do? So for me, it's I'm going to wake up early. And I'm also going to set to-do lists and actually get, get them done. I'm not going to have to-do lists that look like a scroll. I'm going to have three to five things that I commit to a day and commit to, to actually doing them. Someone says, spend less time on social media. Whew, um, you know how I love LinkedIn, y'all, uh, and Instagram and Twitter before it became what it is now. Um, so <laughs> have boundaries at work. I will, I will push that up a notch and say have boundaries at home too. Sleep on time. That's the one place that I probably need to do a better shift. I am both a night owl and an early morning person and it is a weird thing. So I have got to, but I nap. I, I nap when I need to. So I don't know, I'm gonna figure that out. Um, procrastinate less. Let's think about that in a different way. You're going to say you're going to commit more as opposed to procrastinate less, right? Um, <clears throat> block my calendar. Oh, yes. Now you're getting to what I'm talking about. Let's talk about these resources. Calendar. Look, it's almost like you knew what I was going to say. You have got to find some tools to help you to actually help support this process. I love my calendar. If it's on my calendar, it has got to happen, right? Whenever people are like, oh, I didn't see it on my calendar. I'm like, how? How didn't you see it on your calendar? It's literally how we live, but I digress. Um, <laughs> manage the, the time. So I talked about the Pomodoro. So Pomodoro is a, it's a, um, a clock. Um, it's a, a timer, like a kitchen timer. Uh, it doesn't have to like this one. They have actual kitchen timers that look like a tomato, like the Pomodoro tomato. And it helps you to block off time. Essentially, it's 25 minutes of work on one task, one task. You think you're a good multitasker? You are not. Stop trying to. You do not do well at this. I'm telling you. Focus on that thing. No distractions. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at anything else. Do that thing. And then take a break for 15 minutes, 10 minutes, depending on, who, on how you do it. I sometimes will go between those. It is how I get through the things I need to, to do, whether it's writing, um, prepping for sessions, et cetera. Um, even when I say like, I'm going to, you know, for 25 minutes, take a quick nap, like <laughs> I'm going to do this. Uh, it really does work. And for those of you who mentioned that you have ADHD or other, um, um, neurodiversion, um, um, conditions, you, it's a good way to kind of keep yourself on track. So those of you who like to write things out, you can journal by handwritten or use a journal online. It's good to kind of get things out. Uh, I don't do this as much, but I am also going to start committing to twice a week doing what's called the artist's way um, morning papers, which is essentially waking up in the morning and starting to just write out, you, you know, commit to writing, you know, I don't remember what the number of pages is, but writing something for a certain amount of time um, every day. And you don't have to have a structure. You're just writing. You're not letting your, it's an actually writing the pen or pencil hit the page and just keep writing. And it's a good ideation space. Um, but it's also a good um, brain thing for those of you who like me who have ADHD. There are systems and structures to help you to navigate this. I use monday.com for my everything, um, making sure like who I know, um, what projects that I have, what I need to do in those projects, pretty much everything. It's like my big running to-do list and my way of collaborating with my um, support folks. I love Monday. And um, I think it's really cute that it's called Monday because most people don't like Monday, but I like Monday because it helps me. Um, many of you know that I have talked, uh, spoken about this every year. I, we have got to stop thinking that we can do it all. And so even if you don't have your own business like myself, I like a virtual admin 
or an admin or some kind of support structure um, person to help you generally. So whether that, I, you know, I have somebody on here who I know she's got somebody who um, takes the laundry and, and does it and goes to get it done for her. Just picks it up and break. do that. Outsource everything because um, sometimes people will be like, oh, it's financially, it doesn't make sense. And for some of you, it, that's true. But some of you are thinking in a way that I'm going to put this out and it's going to be an expense. And I'm telling you, it becomes more of an investment because then you use your time in a better way. Podcast, like Jen was mentioning, she started in this process. I hope you will listen to mine, Branding Room Only, coming to you soon. Uh, and I love all of these. I've got LinkedIn Learning, I do Udemy, I do Skillshare, and I love YouTube. If you want to learn about something, there is an opportunity for you to do that somewhere. And I love signing up for webinars um, because for most of them, even if you cannot make it live, they will send you the recording. So you should do that. If you're thinking, oh, I want to learn and I'm never going to go back to school again, like I feel, um, then make sure you're committing to learning. Right? Your professional development keeps you alive. Reading, we talked about. And now... On the slide that is on the screen, I want you, or in the chat, I would like you to recommend any resources that you use um, yourself to help you to navigate the world better. How do we find a virtual assistant? So um, Linda, I will, I will put in the chat my, um, my time, et cetera, referral code. So I use this, um, I use time, et cetera, um, for my virtual admin. Um, uh, outsourcing, but there's a lot, and I've actually learned about a lot uh, this year. So when I um, send the resources, I will send um, a bunch of them that I have learned uh, about because you might have specific things that you want. And I, there's one that I learned about that is all military um, wives. So um, they do virtual admin work, and many of them have had you know full careers before um, being married to someone in the military. And then um, because of the fact that they move around a lot, it's hard for them to keep a, a job sort of um, one place. And so the virtual admin at, solely engages folks who are, um, who are spouses, which I think is great as well. There's a lot. So let's see, we have um, magic virtual assistants. Okay, that's another one I got on, that I'll have on there. Full focus planner. So there was a bunch that was shared with me in the pre-survey. So that'll all be on a list as well that I will share with you. And okay, while you are putting stuff in the chat and on the um, in the um, in the mentee, I'm gonna share with you our other fun collaboration that we do every year, which I'm super excited. Oh, Sitter Pro for backup childcare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I like it. So on the screen is the link to our current running collaborative Spotify hype song list. So um, you can, while you're putting in resources into the chat, you can also put in a song with the artist that you want to share on this, or you, when you click the link that takes you to Spotify, you can add the song in yourself. It's a collaborative playlist, so it's all of our stuff. So I put in all the songs that were submitted before in the pre-survey and um, I, you know, for those of you who are on this um, webinar last year and the years before, we do one of these every year, and I love it. My, what well, my suggestion is to play it on shuffle, because there's some songs where I'm like, I know this song, uh, but I never knew this song. I love hearing new songs um, and putting these on there. I was like, oh my god, I don't know this song. And there's one gospel song um, that you know, so many of you know that. I wasn't raised in the church. I, I was raised to love the Lord. It was raised in the church. And so I always say I went to Bedside Baptist, right? I was not in the church, but I love gospel music. Um, and I didn't know about the, the song, Encourage Yourself. And somebody put it on the list last year. And it literally, every time I felt sad or stressed or overwhelmed, I would play it so much so that my son like knows the lyrics now. It is the best song, but I wouldn't have known about it if it wasn't for this session. So... Um, I hope that you put songs on there that are going to move us um, to an, another space. And we are going to, in about a minute, move to just the Q&A portion of this, where you get to ask me whatever you want. And my commitment this year is that if I don't answer your question in the time that we have, um, is that I'm going to do either YouTube videos or something on Instagram or put it on LinkedIn. I'm going to put it somewhere where I'm going to answer the questions that you've asked me. So, and I will update you all and maybe put them in my newsletter 
to say like, here's a question that was asked during the goal setting and I didn't get a chance to answer it live. So here's my answer. And that also helps me to meet one of my goals, which is to do more video. See what I just did there? So um, I hope that you got this link, but even if you didn't, the link will be in the resources um, for you. Okay. So remembering, let's do this, right? We're going to do this together. We are in this space for us together. And I'm so excited for our, how we're going to change the world, how we're going to impact the entire world with our goals, our energy, our intentions. So before we move to this last part where you ask questions, you'll see on the slide, I want you to pick one statement. On December 31st, 2023, I will have accomplished and just answer it. Answer it so that we can really, I want, to, I want this energy to, to do something for us right now. I, I'm gonna say that by December 31st, 2023, I will have visited the continent. Um, not sure which country yet of Africa. <laughs> and um, I'm so looking forward. So if you all have been and you have recommendations, please share them with me um, or anything else that you want. Um, so we are gonna do that. and. And remember to give yourself grace. This is important. All right, so you're answering this. Oh, I've lost 10 pounds, submitted my law school applications, all of my SMART goals, met my life partner, finished my first semester in law school, have 3,000 members for my membership site. Yes. A oh, fulfilling career that uses my talents and helps people. Oh, I'll secure the new job and the certifications I want. Yes, you will. Visited two new countries and be in the best shape of my life. Come on. I love it. All right. So really quick, you're going to get this in the, um, the resources, but you know that I like to make my intentions and I make my manifestation tangible. And so I encourage you that if you set, and I know that you did, because that's what we're doing here, some good intentions, to so put it in a vision board and you can do it on a small piece of paper or on an actual board like I do. Um, on the, the handout that I'll give you in terms of what to do, it gives you some ideas, right? You can kind of put some of your thoughts about the areas of your life um, on the paper and then start thinking about where you want to put the, the things on your vision board. Um, you want to fill in your theme word on the top and, and then you fill in either things you write, you can use stickers, you can cut off magazines like I do. Um, you can use just pictures instead of words. You can do whatever you want. It's your vision board. Um, and I do this every year and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I have it right next to me. I actually literally have it right next to me, but I just, I have a picture of, of it for you to see, um, on the slides. I finished it this morning. It is, um, it's why I was in such a good mood when I, I got on because I love this exercise. So I encourage you to do it. And if you have questions when you're doing your vision board, reach out to me. And I love answering those questions too. Look at my vision board. My word of the year is advanced and it's in the middle. And look, look at this. I got all the things that I want on here. I'm a fashionista, global brand, my video, my podcast, my content, famous. I'm going to be Oprah-esque. I'm going to be an influencer. I'm going to make all the money. I got to check to myself. I'm going to have grit. Look at that. Uh, my marriage is going to work. I'm going to upgrade my nights to get most of my day. <laughs> I'm going to get massages. I'm going to move and sleep. Like it has all the things that I'm putting out there for myself on here. And it's just fantastic. I love looking at it. It makes me feel happy and energetic, um, especially in times when I may not feel that great. So I encourage you to make a vision board. You can do it um, on Pinterest. And we should all support Pinterest because their general counsel is now a person, powers of people. But um, just do it. Um, just do it. Okay. So now that I've blabbed on, the floor is open. You can either ask on the Q&A section of um, the, what is it called, of the um, webinar, or you can use um, the mentee to ask me anything. So someone says, Paul, love Coach Paul, are you a matchmaker too? If so, how can we use your services? So I, it's, it's sort of my fun thing to do. I do it mostly for people who I know, um, but somebody actually encouraged me to do a webinar to talk about my, um, my strategy around this um, and how do I guide people through this. So I might do it as my birthday gift to the world since my birthday is Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's got good loving energy to it. So I might do that. But if you are somebody who knows me and um, knows me, like has my cell phone number, like knows me, um, 
then reach out and let's talk. Cause I, this is a, a place that I like to put that. I just, there should be more people who experience love. We should all have this. Oh, somebody says, how are commitments different from goals? I, I mean, I don't know that they are. Goals are just specific ways of listing out your commitments. Um, and I like to think of it as committing to reaching your goals, if that makes sense. Um, oh, question. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Well, I won't I'll actually take you to this. You're all gonna be my mailing list. You don't have to worry about this, but I love this picture that Jay also took. Um, and somebody says they already submitted the question. So I'm going to go to the questions that were submitted and start answering some. If for the person who said that, if you want to resubmit it so I know which one to select, I'm happy to do that right now. Okay. Question. I have a lot of skills and passions, but I need to make money. Child, yes. Aside from my full-time job, how do I figure out a steady side hustle? So I think that side hustles tend to be a space where you have um, a natural skill or something that you've learned that doesn't seem hard for you. Um, so that it doesn't take away or do or make your day job um, com compromise. So think about something that is just um, fun for you to do or easy for you to do or something that you've been trained in and you know how to do well and that doesn't take have too much of a burden from you. And how then can you monetize it? And think about all the things, all the things. So um, there's a woman who I'm going to be working with as she's an organizer. She just really she realized that she was good at organizing things and it turned it into her business started as her, side, as her side gig and now made it into her full-time gig. So that's what I mean. Um, write out your skills and passions. Don't just think, oh, I know how to do this. Actually write them out. And if you're not sure which ones, think about um, asking your friends, what do you think I'm good at? What like, Or think about what your friends come to you for or your family comes to you for. Think about that. A lot of people who I know who are coaches started out as that being their side gig, side gig me included, uh, because people kept asking me stuff. And I was like, huh people pay for this. Um, so, um, so think about that, literally write it down. What am I good at? And this is an exercise everybody should do. And I love the thought of asking other people, um, what it is that you are, um, are good at too, because oftentimes the way imposter syndrome shows up is that it does not, um, let you see all of your fantastic skills. So, so get some, some assistance on that one. So, um, while I'm waiting for a couple more questions to come in, um, Hold on a second. I'm struggling my word. I want to be more intentional in the choices I make professionally, but I feel like intentional is a cop-out word. How do I work on this more? Intentional is not a cop-out word. It's not. Why don't, how about this? Um, if you don't like intentional, maybe deliberate. Um, focused. But intentional is not a cop-out cop word. If you want intentional to be your word, then let that be your word. And it it is actionable, right? I'm actually going to do this thing, right? It means that you're not just going to think about it, it's going to actually be done. So um, maybe you want to make it into a phrase like concrete intentions or actionable intentions. What, you know, it's your word. You can make it whatever you want. Don't, I, I don't want it to be bind, bounding to you. I want it to be freeing for you. Okay. Okay. So let's see, I'm going to go into some questions that I got before. What if my goal isn't the right goal? How do I know if I'm heading in the right direction? So I think when I started out talking about setting your goals by, by really reflecting for yourself who you are, what you need, where you are at the time, helps you to have the energy to go towards it. But if as you're moving towards that goal, it doesn't feel good, then recalibrate, right? Maybe modify the goal or find a new goal. That's why this intention shift is so wonderful because it doesn't make you feel like um, that you failed if you should decide you want to switch your goal or that's not the right goal, you can change it. You are allowed to do whatever you want as long as it is legal. <laughs> okay. Um, any tips on how to properly value yourself while also providing the services for the community? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. How to properly value yourself while also providing services for the community? If i.e. the goal of the business is to partially support the community. So I have this um, challenge often, I'll call it challenge. <laughs> is that because I do work that is um, good for the world, um, and that means that supporting communities of color, helping to advance diversity and inclusion, helping for people to be better, that, um, that oftentimes people think that those things should come at a low cost um, structure. Nope, 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 nobody, nope, nope. The only thing that I do for free are the things that I want to do for free because I can support my community when I am better um, resourced. So. 
So my answer to you is to value yourself, understand what your value is, and then still support the community. It doesn't have to be, they don't have to be two separate things. Not at all. Okay. Um, ooh, this is a good one. Okay. Um, Oh, someone asked if we can share the session with others. Yes, yes, of course, of course. I'm gonna, it's gonna go on my YouTube. So that link will also be included as well. And it'll be posted on my social media. Yes, I, I want you to share it with people. I hope that you felt this momentum. And I can tell you that every year, even when people do it in recording, they 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 reach out to me. Um, it is one of the most viewed things on my YouTube every year. Okay. I have never tried an online dating service and have been struggling through the divorce process. Can you recommend any dating sites? How about Tinder? So um one number one is this i'm a big believer that you need to have closure before you move on because the energy is better now if you are have already had closure relationally and you're just waiting for the actual divorce to be finalized then that's fine i don't think you have to actually have the divorce but for some people the actual signing off on divorce is what that closure is and they, that they need for themselves um so that being said there there's that uh, I do believe, I know that actually there's a couple people who are on here who I know who are um, match.com um, loves, love matches, that that online dating can work for you. But it, it becomes, for some, if you don't have the energy, uh, it can be, um, you know, exhausting because you're doing a lot. Uh, and it can also become um, uh, disheartening if you don't sort of have a response that you want at the time that you want it. So, that being said, I think you should try. I think you should go to the process of setting up, of setting up your profile. Um, like I said, Match.com is the one that I know that has built some relationships, and then the other one is, um, well, it's not Match, not Tinder, not um, not Okay Cupid, not Coffee and Bagels. It's another one. It's one that makes you fill out a really long process before you actually can get your profile up. I just can't remember what it's called now. Uh, it'll come back to me. Um, not eHarmony. Thank you. Yes, it's eHarmony. Yes, they make it. And so I've helped people fill out the eHarmony. I feel like it's like the SAT is like the bar, but it's a good exercise in figuring it helps you to know who you are in order to, um, to really reflect that best. Um, but that being said, make sure you have a good picture. I know a couple of photographers. Daryl is on here, and so is Jay. And I think somebody else might know a photographer on here. But use the photographer. Like I saw a lot of people put selfies on these things, or ones where you know that somebody, like somebody's arm is cut off on the side, and somebody else is in the picture, and is there probably their ex? Like, come on, don't do that. <laughs> Find a picture where you look good and um, take it, please. Um, uh, oh, um, Jen, just go to YouTube. Type in on YouTube how to do a vision board on, on Pinterest. And actually, Pinterest might have a tutorial on Pinterest itself about how to do a vision board on there. Uh, and I have one. So I do it on both on my phone as well as um, on the computer for Pinterest. I love Pinterest. Um, okay. So I am, of course, let's see. <gasps> Ooh, Morocco. Oh, y'all. All right. This is such a great, I love this energy. Okay. Let's see where the other questions are. There's another question in here. Um, okay, I hope I answered the question about the value. Like the thing is, is that you want to, to do a scan to see what other people are charging for whatever it is that you do. Um, think about where you are on the scale of skill set and experience from the people who are doing it, and then set a price. Um, that's what I do in terms of um, in terms of business, and and you know what some of the things that I have recently started saying in order to advance equity is I ask folks when they are um, engaging with me is, or challenging me on my price, what was the last thing you paid a white man the same amount? What was the last thing you paid about the same thing or similar thing? And I wanna know, like, and it helps to remind people, I'm like, look, we're, we're talking about equity. We're really committing to um, being anti-racist and being um, a supporter of women and women of color. Then, then that means that you should be focusing on making sure that um, I am able to help my child go to school and I'm able to eat well and to dress in nice clothes. And that means that, right, let's do it. So, um, um, oh, uh, I think maybe somebody I know that's in, in, um, in Maryland. Let me think about that. And Jen, if you know anybody that um, might be a good vision board person, I'm thinking usually the person who does them is like a coach. Um, or or a facilitator generally, but you, I may be somebody I know, I gotta think about it, I'll ask around. Okay, ooh, good question. How do I learn to feel proud of my accomplishments and wins? 
My current mentality is to keep it private or hide it from haters, but I want the, to empower myself to promote my successes confidently. Listen to me. Haters do not matter. The only thing that matters is that you are doing what you need to do and that you're putting good energy out into the world. Haters don't matter. What, why, are you, why are we thinking about folks who are not supportive of you? I, 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 I just think it's a bad use of your time and energy. Who cares what they think? Who cares? I don't care. You shouldn't care. And, and it's not because I'm any different than you. It's that we are all humans and we don't want to be judged wrongly and we don't want to be hurt. I get that. But I'm telling you this, especially if you are a woman, and I don't know if you are or not, or if you identify as a woman, but if that's the case, we set momentum by the way that we show up for ourselves. We set, um, we make it easier for another woman to do so. And that is something that I think that we should do more of. And that um, a lot of the ways in which we are raised is to be just very sort of like, you know, I don't wanna take up space, take up all the space right? Run for something 15 times until you get it. <laughs> like we have to do this. We have to stop thinking that we should be small. We have to be big in the space and to add value in that, right? I don't want you to do it and not be value, add value, but I want you to know that you have got it. And it's not to be boastful. It's to do it in a savvy way. And it's a good way that you use your squad, right? To be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make an ask right now. I ask everybody every year, if you enjoy this experience, if you find value from the experience, tell people about it. Um, my love language is social media. So say on social, if you're on there, here's a screenshot of Paula doing this thing. And she did this and it was great. And I picked my word because then people see who I am and then they are exposed to my business and who I am. And that's what I need. So I use other people for my squad, use other people but use yourself. I also don't mind taking a selfie and being like, hey, guys, look at this dress I'm wearing today. Isn't it the best? Do it. You have to tell people that you're doing a good job. And especially because we are in a state where we're still going through so much trauma <laughs> in the world that people need something to make them smile, like the, to be happy. Um, we can collectively be happy about each other's success and we should. Um, do I do goal setting sessions for work teams? I absolutely do. I do do that. Um, so feel free to reach out to me um, about that. And I'm happy to engage. I do a lot of retreats um, and I do a lot of setting goals on branding and on business development. And so, yeah, please reach out to me whoever asked that question. Uh, all right, other questions that came up. I'm gonna, um, I was asked to, to, to go over 10 minutes to get to this one question. So I'm gonna stay on until 4.10. So if you need to go, you feel free to leave me. Um, but like I said, tell a friend, I will share resources with you. And I look forward to hearing about your goals. I'm gonna answer a couple more questions for about 10 more minutes. Um, tips to, on how to remain consistent and not get discouraged. So here we have in the atmosphere, some more sadness, right? And it's why we do the hype list. It's why we have the hype song because we need tools that will help us to get into a better space when we are sad, right? And so, what about the people who love you? What about the person who loves you? What about the things that make you happy? So one of the, the intersection of the song and, um, and the sadness piece is that when I feel sad, um, I like to listen to songs. And one of the songs I like to listen to is my mother and I would sing Spoonful of Sugar for, for, um, from Mary Poppins. And um, I sing it or I play it and it makes me feel better. <laughs> I did not want to put it on our collaborative list because I felt like you may not have the same experience I have with the song, but it really is a fantastic thing. Thank you all so much. Thank you for being here. And again, if those of you who don't want to leave, you have more questions, ask me questions. I'll, I'll take the live ones, but I have others that were submitted before. I want um, I want this to be what you need it to be. And that's why I want to give the extra time uh, because one of my good lawyer friends said, well, you started five minutes late, so I should get five more minutes. And I, I hear you and I double that to 10. Um, okay. So, so think about what makes you happy. Um, I'm not a big fan of using food as medicine, but I also do love a taste of something. So I would just be like, let me just bite into this lovely cookie that I like here. So <laughs> it's not good. And don't tell my trainer, but, <laughs> but do something that brings you joy. Watch the show. I like to watch the Ted Lasso Christmas episode, things that just, you know, will take me out of the funk. Um, and remember when you are experiencing sadness, it is short-lived. You're experiencing it now, but it, it gets better, right? That's important. 
talk to you soon, Anna. I can't wait. I have to reach out to you about another one of my goals that we discussed as well. So, Maylin, I miss you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Um, okay. So let me see more questions. Um, fellow Aquarius, Aquarius represent, um, feel free to reach out on a Valentine's Day, as we say in Brooklyn. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's for a friend of mine who makes fun of the fact that um, kids say Valentine's Day, which they should not. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, how do you reset? Um, so the question is really speaking to how do you reset when you've had a, a fall off of a goal or even right now? And I like to make it a ritual. So for me, this, this is a ritual that helps me to reset. So what am I doing? I, um, at the end of each year, I have a whole set of things that I do as I go into the new year. So I took everybody's um, recommendations on how they go into the new year in their culture. And I tried to do as many of those things as possible. So that's 12 grapes at midnight where I'm like, <laughs> um, that is to put a small goal onto a piece of paper, burn it and put it into a glass of champagne and drink it. I do that. Um, it is making sure my house is clean. It is using sage throughout my house to make sure that the energy is, is clear and clean. Um, I have, we have new bed sheets on our beds every um, uh, Christmas or New Year's Eve. We also wear new pajamas. We also wear either yellow or red underwear because yellow is abundance and red is, um, is love. Again, dual is saying my favorite thing that we do is we walk around the block with an empty suitcase, which means we'll have tra more travel in the year. So we do that as well. Um, and uh, that's a part of like my reset. And then the next thing is to do my vision board. One thing I didn't do this year that I'm still going to do that I'll be sharing in the resources is the, um, the year compass that I've shared in previous years. It is a real soul searching experience to kind of look back. So, you know, if you want to not use all the questions that I use and go to use this one, do it. Year compass is a fantastic resource but it really makes you think about a lot. And for me, it is, um, it takes me sad then up, sad then up and then up. And um, I had to prepare myself for that. And I just didn't feel like doing it yet this year. So I'm going to do it, but not yet. Um, so before I keep going with that, somebody asked a question, is it advisable to reach out to law school admissions while waiting for decisions or wait patiently? Um, I would say it depends if it's like one of the schools, the top three schools that you're looking for, um, you might want to engage in some, um, apply, you know, student, you know, people who've applied events so that you can show your interest. Um, you might want to reach out to some alumni who may be engaged, but I would hold off on the specific reach out until maybe it's been, you know, six weeks or so, like give it some time. Like if it was yesterday, do not reach out, right? Um, it's called not your compass. I'm sorry. It's called your compass, your compass. Um, and you can go to your compass.com, but I'm also going to be including it in the, um, in the resources. Um, awesome. So, okay. I think I finished my question. I lost my train of thought because I get excited. Um, how to not get overwhelmed or overschedule myself throughout the year. Don't. Schedule time for yourself, block time out on your calendar, set boundaries. Oh, thank you for sharing the link. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I put it in the, my newsletter recently um, and it'll be in the resources again, but it's fantastic. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, set boundaries. And many of you, particularly those who work in um, timekeeping industries think, oh, I can't because my, you know, my time is not my own time. Here's what I'm saying to you. Yes, it is. But you have to be strategic about this. So take your vacation. If you can't take two weeks off, take off two Fridays a month. Take off the afternoon. Do something to take to care for yourself. This year, you know, for those of you who might like circle know that I decided that I was going to um, get massages more frequently this year. And it's literally the only time that the world is quiet for me. And I love it. And now I will not, my masseuse knows me better than everybody else. I'm like, you are the best. I love you so much. Like she can be like, what happened this week? And I'm like, I know, right? What did they do to me? So um, it's, 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 you gotta, you have to take the time. So that 90 minutes is mine. It will, it's not negotiable. And, um, and, you know, like Stephanie talks about often, hi, Stephanie, that I choose Mondays and Fridays for the most part to be not client facing. So it's me, it's working, but it's not client facing. And that's important for me to get stuff done. And you're welcome to all of you who are saying thank you in the chat. I look forward to seeing you and seeing how you kill it um, because we're gonna. So um, 
I'm gonna answer some more questions. Let me see, is there another one in the chat? Hi, Stephanie. I can't wait to see what your goals are in your new phase of life. I'm going to, fun fact, I'm going to be the MC for a retirement party tonight. So I am looking forward to doing that. My wonderful cousin, Auntie Baby, for those of you who know her, um, who she makes the best macaroni and cheese. She's retiring. I'm not for making macaroni and cheese though. Don't get crazy. Uh, <laughs> hi, Leslie. So good to see you. I can't wait to see you virtually again. Um, okay, let's see. What else? Other questions. Um, okay, the side hustle one is on here. When your family's not on board, I'm telling you, Sometimes you've got to push people to get on board. We often think that and or deprioritize ourselves and, and people fall in line when you when you start to prioritize yourself. So let them. You know what? I used to think that nothing would happen if I didn't do it. And my therapist was like, you are not that special girl. <laughs> and I was like, you're wrong. She was like, no, I'm not. Trust me, they can figure it out on their own. And then lo and behold, the world kept going when I stopped doing stuff. And so I encourage you to say, I'm going to choose me. It's not selfish. It is um, you end up being a better you for everybody else when you've committed to yourself. I know this for sure. I know there's people on here who've done it and have note and noted that change. Um, and I'm so proud of you for doing it for those of you who know who I'm talking about. Um, okay. Ooh, effective tools for finding time for deep thinking, quiet work amidst the never ending meeting. So, okay, we talked about the calendar. I also like listening to, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget how to say the word, but I just type in on, on whatever your favorite music platform is, um, music for focus, and it is set up for your brain waves to help you focus. So when I use my Pomodoro, I also use that, the, um, that music to help me to focus. And other times I listen to Biggie to help me focus. It just depends. <laughs> um, how to stay consistent with connecting with each other, with others. Um, so this is like a business development, but it's also a, a relationship building. You've got to make a list. Make a list of, um, I start the year with a top 10 list of people who I want to connect with. And then I start checking them off. And then I make another list of 10 people. And so it's, it's not, I'm not looking for them to do anything. Now it may be a little bit different because I'm going to be reaching out to people for my podcast. but I'm reaching out and I'm just saying, I want to either expand with people who I don't know or to reconnect with people who I do know, um, or now it's going to be to ask for my, um, my podcast. So I think you just do it and keep pushing the pile until you, you know, move it on a little bit more. So I think give yourself some, some space, reach out to four, you'll probably get one. If you don't hear from them, don't take it personally. It's not you. It's them. The people are busy. Um, Ooh. Um, so so there's a reference for um, the meditation app. I like um, I like Headspace and I also like Calm, the Calm app. And yes, I used to use the Shine app as well. And yes, that's it's terrible. It's not in existence. But I like I like Headspace because I like to listen to the um, I like I have a bias for people with a British accent, like it just other and the guy who does the Headspace meditations. He talks like this spoiler, and so I like to hear him. So try Calm if you don't like Headspace. Okay, um, and then I guess one last question. Let me see. Let me do a, get a good one. And don't forget about the mail. I mean, not mailing list. The um, don't forget about the music list. So you can add your own to it, or send me some more, and I'll put them on there. Okay, more questions. Hmm. Oh. That one is hard. I might ask, I'm going to answer that one in the video. How do you prioritize your goals? I think you look at which ones sing to your heart the most. Either which ones are imminent for you because you know you need to get them done, like you've been waiting for a long time or that they will help to move more things along. Use those. But if like there's some that make your heart sing, like if I do this, this will be great. And I hate if then when it comes to goals, but there are just some that energetically are much more momentum driving. So that's how I would select it. So, but for example, if you know that um, finding someone to share your life with will then help you with, you know, um, wanting to set health goals and then also to create a family, like all of those things, they move with each other. So think about what might help the dominoes to, go forward as usual in, in, a, in a better way. Um, all right. Finally, I will say to you that even if we just met, remember that I love you and I thank you for joining me for this 
um, two hours and 10 minute journey and share it with a friend and go get those goals, go set those intentions. And I'm going to check in with all of you mid-year, just not in a webinar, but I will check in with you. Um, so check your emails when I do that. And you'll be getting the resources by tomorrow-ish um, at, at midday and um, go out and do good in the world. And I can't wait to see how you have killed it next year. See you in Pittsburgh. Well, we'll talk next week. You know, I look forward to talking to you then as well. Bye, y'all. I, yes, I'm going to circulate the recording. It's going to be my YouTube, but it'll be in the resources as well. And I'll also put in my dress, the link to get my dress as well. But you have to promise not to wear it when I'm going to be at the same place. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Do great. Do great. You got this. Engage your hustle. Make sure you're the wind and not the leaf. <laughs>